and welcome to part 3 of the Magic Probe software tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial we're actually going to get some measurements uh, done and uh, include those on, on the instrument. So we've got our violin picture loaded. Um, <coughs> the most important thing as we said from start is to click on clear all as we're starting a new project and want to make sure that there's no hidden uh, measurements that we've entered previously or previous data and we want to start on a fresh project. So we click on the clear all button, it gives us a, a blank slate and uh, test that our magic probe is working, it's doing the measurements uh, as I move the probe around the instrument. Um, so we're ready to go. So to understand the basics of the measurement there, there are two main ways to enter uh, measurements onto the instrument. Uh, the one is what I'll call the normal or the basic mode. Um, is just to move your probe on the instrument and to to click anywhere on the instrument uh, where your probe is located and to enter that value onto the instrument. So uh, to invoke that mode, you must make sure that you're not in the pre-map mode. So the pre-map mode should be unchecked. Um, it, once I, if I check the pre-map mode, these three icons here, the map location, map values and auto insertion mode will appear. Uh, so make sure for the basic mode that you're not in the pre-map mode. You should not have any uh, data or any options uh, on the top there. So in, in the basic mode, whatever measurement appears in these windows uh, coming from the Magic Probe unit at that time, if I click on the picture, that measurement will appear uh, on the instrument. So in other words, there's 2.87, which is the, is the millimeter value as discussed before. So the, the object of this is that the, you will move your probe to the location on the instrument that you're measuring and you will move your mouse to the same location that your probe is measuring at the moment. So if your probe is located at this area here, you'll move your mouse to that location and, and click and the measurement will appear at that location. Um, again, if you want to delete, you can undo the measurements and again wherever your probe is located that is where you need to position your mouse and click on that uh, particular location to have the measurement there and then you will move your probe to the next location M move your mouse to the same location where your probe is and click there to have the next uh, measurement and so forth and you can go and enter as many measurements as you want on the particular instrument now the disadvantage of this uh, normal mode is obviously that you have to position your mouse at the location uh, that your probe is measuring. Now for some this may not be a disadvantage, it's, it's pretty simple to do uh, depending on how you do your measurements and how you hold the instrument, but it is inconvenient uh, sometimes to, to have to uh, hold the probe steady on the instrument and use your other hand to use the to move the mouse to the particular location and to to do your measurement. Um, so this is the, the basic way, uh, the more useful way and the time-saving way is to use the actual uh, pre-map mode uh, of the Magic Probe software. So to demonstrate that I'm first going to clear all again, make sure that I have a blank slate and then I'm going to invoke the pre-map mode. Now the pre-map mode puts these three icons uh, on the top bar, uh, on the top menu bar, and the the way that it works is that you first start with map location and then you will either use map values or, or order insertion, uh, either one of those, but the, the, the starting point is map location. So the basic concept behind the uh, pre-map mode is that you will pre-plan on the instrument where you will be making the measurements in during your measuring session. Um, so this doesn't involve measurement at this stage, you will just be pre-planning those, those locations. So if I'm on the map location option, when I click on the actual instrument, instead of the value being transferred to that point, there will be a sequential number, uh, in this case number one, and if I click again, you will have the next number in sequence, number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc., etc. 
and I can have hundreds of these uh, pre-planned locations on the screen. So the object of the exercise is that we pre-plan all the locations uh, where we want to do measurements during our measuring session. And this may come from a pre-planned uh, drawing that you have of the instrument with the locations on that you lay over your instrument while you're measuring or it may just be something that you decide on the fly uh, where you're going to be measuring. The advantage of this method is that once you've entered these locations you can actually save this as a master file um, because most uh, instrument makers or most users who are measuring an object will use that same object or that same instrument plan over and over and over again uh, which means that you can put measurements for different instruments on the same locations and then compare those measurements uh, on your future records and your printouts and your saved files um, and, and you have a true comparison with exactly the same locations on each instrument. So that is the, the object behind uh, the pre-map mode or the map location and to give you a demonstration I've already saved a, an instrument with uh, those locations on. So I'm going to load a new image. Here is an instrument that has already been, been uh, planned uh, for, for a few locations. I think in this case I've got 71 locations. Uh, that I've saved on there and I've saved this as a master file so uh, as long as you're careful and not to overwrite this file you can reuse this file over and over and over again and as you can see these these locations are actual live locations in other words if I put the mouse over um, the location the mouse turns into a hand and I can reposition that uh, marker when I want to. So again it's important to understand that once you enter measurements onto the picture file that measurement actually becomes part of the picture file once I've saved it. But the map locations do not become part of the picture file in fact they become a text file that gets saved with a picture file with each location so that when I load this as a master uh, file it goes and retrieves these locations and and overlays them on the base picture that I have at the bottom and that's that's how we can reuse this uh, picture over and over again for future measurements on on future instruments again once I've entered measurements into these locations and save that then the, this file would not be usable again it's basically just a it's a permanent uh, picture file with those uh, measurements embedded into the file itself. Right, so once I've got my locations uh, plotted out where I want to locate, then I can choose one of two methods uh, to enter actual measurements onto this onto this file. Um, the most common way is map values and then auto insertion is another option which we'll discuss. So if I click on the map values option do my measurement on the specific instrument um, and then if I click anywhere on the screen uh, don't have to click at any particular location the mouse could be located anywhere on the screen if I click on the mouse what's going to happen is that that measurement is going to be entered into location number one okay um, you'll see that the location number one is now being replaced by 3.45 when I click again on the screen, 3.48 will be measured on, or will be entered into location number two. So the object of the exercise is that in, instead of moving your mouse to the actual location where your probe is, you just move the probe to the pre-planned location. So in other words, you would move the probe to that location on the instrument. Once you're there and you've got a steady measurement, click on OK, and that measurement will appear in number one move your probe to the location number two. Once the reading is steady, click anywhere on the picture and that measurement will appear in location number two. Now, if you find it difficult to click the mouse, you can also hit any key on the keyboard, except for Shift and Control and Alt um, and Enter, but you can hit any key on the keyboard, any number key or any, any letter key, and it will do the same thing 
as clicking the mouse anywhere on the screen. So whatever's easiest for you, uh, you, you can do that. So um, you move your probe to location number three, click or hit any key, and that value will be entered into that particular location. And as you continue moving the, the probe to each location, you can, you can continue in entering values. Right, so that's the that's the most common method of doing it. The big advantage of this method is again that uh, instead of having to move the mouse to that particular location, once you've located the probe at the specified location, um, instead of doing that, you can just click the mouse anywhere or hit any key on the keyboard, so you don't uh, waste a lot of time um, by moving the mouse and and making sure that you're at the right location because that location has has already been pre-planned uh, for you. Right, and again in this mode, if I've made a an error uh, and I had the wrong measurement, I can again go to delete last entry or press Control Z, and if I delete that, then that location will be returned back to its numerical value instead of being filled with a with a um, measurement value. Right, the next uh, way of, of doing this, which saves even more uh, hand movement, if you like, uh, is the auto insertion mode. So if I invoke the auto insertion mode, you'll see that some new buttons and displays will open at the top here. First of all, there's a numerical countdown timer here, which is uh, starts from 5 and will go to 4, 3, 2, 1, uh, once per second, and there's a start and a stop button. So the the object of this is to alleviate you from having to press uh, any button or, or on the keyboard or any button on the mouse. Uh, it will automatically count down this timer if the reading from the unit is stable and when it counts down to 1 or 0 then that value will be automatically entered into the next numerical location. So in this case uh, we're looking for a value to be entered into location number 5. Uh, so when I click the start button you will see that this countdown timer will start counting down but it will only count down if the value from the from the magic probe unit is stable and what I mean by stable is that it's not varying very much so when I'm moving the probe on the instrument the value will be varying as I move the probe on the instrument um, however when I stop at a particular location that value should become pretty stable um, so we, let's demonstrate it I click on the start and while the probe is, is in variance the magic probe software will not be able to count down any further than four um, so it tries to count down but as long as the the measurement is unstable it'll reset itself back to five and try and count down again once i get to a stable measurement it'll count down to five four three oops two one and then that measurement once it's stable, will appear in number 5. There it is. Okay, and now we're looking for a value to be entered in number 6. And there it is. Right, so again, there are two, the two ways of, of entering the actual physical values onto the instrument, or either by math values or this order insertion mode. Uh, pick whichever is easiest for you. If you're holding the instrument in one hand and the probe in another hand, then you'll have to use the auto insertion mode. If your instrument is, is uh, mounted or fixed to a table and you have one free hand in order to hit the uh, key on the keyboard uh, or click the mouse, um, then the map values mode will probably be the easiest for you. So you have a choice of the two, either the map values or the auto insertion. Uh, just simply choose whichever method works best for you. In my case I'm going to just choose the uh, map values function and I'm going to go ahead and, and enter some fictitious values uh, into this instrument picture 
just so that we can continue and, and have a look at the other features. So each time I'm clicking the mouse, whatever value is coming from the Magic Probe unit is being entered sequentially into the uh, JPEG picture. And of course, uh, these are just fictitious values just so that we can get something uh, to continue the tutorial. Right, uh, I've completed all seven in one measurements. You'll see if I try to measure another one, it'll tell me that you cannot measure more than the pre map values, which is obviously I've completed seven in one, there is no location for seven in two. So uh, that's the message that you'll receive then. So this concludes the tutorial uh, f for at least the Magic Probe Lite software. Uh, we're going to continue further with the contouring aspects um, that are found in the Magic Pro Pro software.